In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most important processes that I'm doing right now, which is data gathering. The simple act of reviewing the market every single day, every single week, every single month, and even before when you are backtesting will give you so much information for you to work on your edge, for you to adjust it, for you to improve it and whatsoever. You can watch as much strategy content as you want, but if you never apply it in the live markets, you will never get the real experience. The way you can get this experience is by demo trading, doing it on a live account or even just forward testing which is basically the act of putting the risk reward tool on the charts and treating it as if you were taking the trade and it's also not beneficial when you are doing your ASR which is basically journaling the trades that you've taken but then you never really go ahead and review the trades that you've taken the three most important processes that I do right now are my morning forecasts my daily markups and also the review that I do at the end of every single week every single month of the trades that I've taken this far on the week or on the month respectively. I do this all on Notion and I will walk you through the journal in this exact video and I will explain how I do the processes that I do. You can see how I organize my Notion and you are welcome to copy it or take some ideas from it. If you want this exact Notion template, make sure to check the link in the description. It also has a 50% coupon code. I will also give examples as we are going through it. So make sure to stick around and let's get to the computer. Okay, so this is the notion that I currently use for my trading journal and we're currently in September and one thing that I want to show is that here in this notion template, one thing that I've wanted to keep in mind is that out of sight, out of mind and one thing that happens is that we get infatuated or we get a little bit down after we know the results that we have on a day to day basis on a month to month basis. So you'll notice that a lot of this is like interactive for you to as soon as you finish January, for example, and you finish, let's say, with a 60 percent uh, with a 50 percent strike rate, it also disappears and it goes on to the finished months section. So you can always go back and see the finished months when you want to do it but you are not constantly bombarded every time you go onto your trading journal about your past performance because you don't want that to affect your future performance. Now, if we go on to September, you'll notice directly that one thing that I love to do is I love to set yearly goals, quarterly goals, monthly goals, and daily goals. And when we are doing our journaling, this is mostly when we are based on just one month. So. I love to have the monthly goals that I have directly in front of me. So for example, in this month, I want to have a Euro US dollar written trading plan and you can have this. So it, you will always have this in the forefront of your mind. Even if you don't remember your monthly goals, you can always go back and check and then you can tick them off. So this really helps me achieving more goals for every single month. Then. I have basically two sections I have for the trades, missed trades, and then for the forecast, daily recap, and daily markup, as I said. Because these are the three most important things I love to gather data on. It's like trades, obviously. Missed trades is something that I, when I don't do, I notice that my performance is worse. But when I do, I notice that I keep myself much more accountable. And then the markups, and so morning forecast, daily recap, and daily markup, those are very important. And But we'll get to each of them. So let's say that we enter on a trade on euro dollar. You, you just write down on here euro dollar when it was opened and how much R it was. And then you multiply the R by how much you risked. And this is going to be your profit and loss. You also have the grade, which is, was it a high probability setup, low probability, whatever it was. I like to do it in A, B, and C. Then you come inside and you actually have a template for this, which you can set a new win, a new loss. And basically what it will do, it will open up the template for the screenshots that you might take. If you ever want to change this, it's perfectly fine. But this, these are the timeframes that I personally use and this is why I have it like this. So if you get onto a journal trade, we can see Euro dollar, it was a 10 hour win on the 1st of September. It wasn't the highest probability setup, but it was a win nonetheless. So basically you can see that I screenshot daily, the four hour, the 15 minute, the one minute where I already have my entry right there and then the entry itself. Then below that, I write the confluence. So big sweep of the lows with a big impulse up. You can see it right here. 
big sweep of the lows followed by a big impulse up. POI chosen was basically the extreme because if we break, then we just target the lows, which basically means that if we if we were to break these lows, then I would expect price to actually break this low yet again, but we were not able to break this lows. So I would accept taking the risk right here of taking a long, knowing that if my idea was wrong, then the lows would, were going to be targeted and I would want to be out of the trade either way. PY has inducement, price sweeps liquidity before giving the entry. You can see it right here. You have inducement, inducement, you have inducement here too. All this was liquidity swept to then take the liquidity that laid above and target these highs. And then the five second shock, which is the entry model itself. Then we can also look at the loss example that I have right here, which basically the daily was bearish, four hours bearish, 15 minute was bearish too, and we were at the 15 minute POI. We rejected out of the 15 minute POI, as you can see right here on the one minute. We reject it, we come back, and we have the chalk right here at the top. So and that's my entry, trade aligned with all the time frames. 15 minutes is bearish, and the chosen POI was the one that flipped the daily lows. Reaction of the 15 minute POI was good, and then we flipped the mend to supply, which basically means that here the mend was flipped to supply. Loss of momentum as we approach the supply that flipped the mend and a five second chalk for the entry. This was not the highest probability trade just because the POI was kind of weak, but either way, we had all the confluences that I would look for in order to enter in a trade. It was a beast setup, it was fine. But yeah, this is how I do my ASR for the trades that I take. Then afterwards, after I finish my ASR, I click on done and it actually disappears. Where does it disappear to? Well, it goes into the all trades section and you also have the calendar view because you then are able to see on the calendar where you've taken trades, where you've taken winners, where you've taken losses, and then you can do as you wish with that data. But overall, this is very, very beneficial because once again, out of sight, out of mind, maybe if you had five wins in a row, would you become overconfident? Maybe. So if you can not not consciously know and consciously see that you are in a five trade winning streak, you don't get overconfident in this in the same thing with the losing streaks. If you don't see them, then it's better for your confidence out of sight, out of mind. This is the way that I approach it right now. Then I also have a, a tab for missed trades and then it's just one thing for the missed trades. You also have daily four hour, 15 minute, one minute entry. And if you ever want to change this, for example, let's say that you want to have the five minute, you can come onto here heading two and just put five minute and then you now have a new one. But personally, these are the time frames that I use. And I also like to write the confluences on all the missed trades. Then again, if once you click done, they're done and they go onto the missed trades section and they also go onto a calendar. So. That's how I journal my missed trades. Then last but not least is just the morning forecast that is very, very important. This, the morning forecast and the daily markup are for me right now the most important processes that, I've, that I'm doing because it sh comes to show if my reading of the market has been good or not. So I just say set the date, say if it's done and then it will appear right here. Afterwards, the daily recap is basically when I review all the trades that I've taken in the day and I put all the screenshots right here. And the daily markup is when I go a little bit more in depth. I explain why did price react from this region? Why did I not enter in this trade? What happened throughout the day and what was in my plan with throughout the day? Or even just explaining how structure played out. And I can give you an example. So this is an example of a markup that I do. So basically took the screenshots of the daily for hour 15 minute and then i start doing my comments normally on the 15 minute also on the four hour looking for longs in the morning as we are at the extreme of the range but once we keep failing to break the highs and forming bearish order flow we can look for shorts no real pullbacks to trade from after price started impulsing up then on the one minute i like to go a little bit more in depth so average trade since the 15 minute mitigation wasn't deep but this trade, well, you can you can read it for yourself. Maybe there will come a point where I will publicly show my 
daily markups, but that will come maybe in the future. So you can read it, read it through if you guys want to, to read it. And I also have the entries and whatsoever. So this is how I go about my markups too. And then once you've done the forecast, the daily recap and so on, it just disappears too, which is also a good thing to have. Just for your notion not to be completely filled with daily recaps, markups and whatsoever, and then you have to scroll so much that like this, it will always be at the top. But yeah, this is how I go about it. This is how I do my data gathering. This is how I do my markups, daily recaps, morning forecasts, and etc. And don't forget to maybe copy some things that I have in this notion, take some ideas from it or if you want to check this one out you can check the link in the description that has a 50% discount code but now you might be asking like why is this important so why is this so important well as I said in the beginning of the video, you can have as many trades as you want and still not be profitable if you don't do anything with the data. Maybe there are certain times where you are not as profitable. Maybe you get too emotional after two losses. Maybe there you are just taking too many average trades. These are all things that you are going to figure out through data gathering. And this is work that you have to do yourself. It can't be a mentor. It can't be a coach that is going to fix those minor problems that you have within your own entries or whatever it is. Of course, this also has to be paired with learning new things about your strategy. And this is why data gathering is so important. So make sure to make the most out of it and take as much value from it as you can. And also take your time with gathering the data. If you guys want to check the Notion template out, it's going to be linked in the description with a 50% coupon code. Hope you all enjoyed. Love you. Peace.